In this short video, we're going to look at a very unusual object. It's called a function, but really it's a what we call a generalized function, and it's called the Dirac delta function. So when we first looked at a uh, Laplace transform, we said that, well, we knew that the Laplace transform would exist if we had the two conditions of a function which is piecewise continuous and of exponential order. But we said that if those two conditions were true, then you could never have a function whose Laplace transform would be a constant, like f of s equals 1. But that's if those co two conditions hold. If we don't have those two conditions, then the Laplace transform of a function may still exist. And in fact, there is a generalized function, f of t, whose Laplace transform is a, the constant 1. So obviously, we know this is going to be some kind of unusual object, this generalized function. And it's related to this idea of a unit impulse, which we're going to describe as a powerful strike, so a powerful force applied over a short period of time. And so this could be helpful in modeling when you have a stick striking a ball, say a golf club, baseball bat hitting a ball, or a hammer striking an anvil, or a car that hits a bump at high speed. We're going to start by looking at this function. We're going to call it delta sub a. a is the length, well, half the length of the strike. The strike goes from uh, t naught, a specified t naught minus a, to a specified t naught plus a. So the length of the strike, actually, or the time that the strike takes place is actually 2a. And the height, then, or the force that's applied, is going to be 1 over 2a. And we call it a unit impulse. Unit implies 1 because the area then under the curve then equals 1. So we're going to define the Dirac delta function centered at t naught uh, as being the limit as a goes to 0 of our unit impulse function delta sub a centered at t naught. So there's two properties of this Dirac delta function, or generalized function. So the first thing is that it is zero, zero as a value of zero everywhere, except for at the center of t naught, where it is infinite. Now, infinity is not really a number. We can't really assign it as a function value, but we've really moved uh, to a point where we're going to have to be a little bit sloppy with our notation just so that we have an understanding of what works. So it is an infinite impulse applied over zero time. So yes, this is a strange object. But if we think of it in terms of the limit, then it actually starts to make sense. As a goes to zero, the time of the strike goes to zero, but the height of the strike or the amount of the strike, the force of the strike is the uh, related to the reciprocal of the time that's applied. And since for every value of a, which is not equal to zero, uh, we know that the area under that rectangle is 1, which means that if you take the integral 
from zero to infinity or from negative infinity to infinity uh, of this uh, delta sub a, the integral is always going to be one. So as a goes to zero in the limit, the integral value is still going to be one. So let's calculate the Laplace transform then of this strange object that we call the delta Dirac function. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to assume this is a fact that the limit as a goes to zero of the Laplace transform of our unit impulse function centered at t zero, so the delta sub a of t minus t naught is going to be the Laplace transform the, of the direct delta function centered at the same value. So let's go back to the definition then. So the definition of the Laplace transform of our unit impulse function, well, normally our bounds of integration go from zero to infinity, uh, but there's no point uh, because we know that everywhere except uh, t naught minus a to t naught plus a, that function is zero. So our lower bound becomes t naught minus a, our upper bound becomes t naught plus a. We know the function value is a constant one over two a. And so we'll multiply e to the negative st times that constant. All right, so um, the antiderivative is, is quite simple. So we just have um, the one over two a multiplied times negative one over s. And now we have to do uh, quite a bit of uh, evaluation and algebra. And then we'll have to take the limit as a goes to zero. So let's go ahead and do that evaluation. And we can factor out the e to the s times t naught over s. And so we're focused with this expression. This is the expression where we need to take the limit. So let's just take a look at that and take the limit of that expression e to the minus sa minus e to the power of sa all over 2a. And to do that, we'll use L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of the top is just negative s times e to the power of negative a s minus s times e to the power of s a all over 2. And uh, now um, this is a continuous function, so we can just use direct substitution. We'll replace a with a 0, and that gives us minus s, minus s, all over 2. So that would be negative 2s over 2, or just simply negative s. Now again, that's just the uh, limit of this part. I still need to multiply that then by the constant out in front, which is negative e to the power of s times t naught all over s. And so then my uh, I have a minus times a minus, which will make a plus, and the s's will divide out, and I'm left with e to the power of s times t naught. So that is the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function. So let's use this in, in an example where we're going to solve this uh, second order differential equation uh, with the initial value conditions that y at zero is one and y prime of zero equals zero. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. We know that if we use uppercase y to represent the Laplace transform of lowercase y, then our formula for y double prime is s squared y minus s evaluated at y of zero. 
minus y prime evaluated at 0 plus y. And then we just learned the formula for the uh, Dirac delta function. So if we center it at 2 pi, I'll have negative 2 pi s as the exponent on the e function. And then I have the 4, which comes from the definition of the problem there. So let's put in our initial conditions. And we'll solve that for uppercase y. And now we need to take the inverse Laplace transform. Now the inverse Laplace transform of the first term is simple. That's just going to be cosine of t. What about the second term? Well, we have to remember one of our properties of the Laplace transform, that if I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of e to the power of negative a s times uppercase f of s, that's just going to be a, a the function whose Laplace transform is f of s shifted to the value of a times our unit step function shifted at the value of a. And remember that by taking this product, what it means is the uh, function lowercase f is zeroed out. It's turned off until we reach the value where t equals a, and then it gets turned on. So let's use that formula. And so that means that our response function in this system, so you could think of this as a spring mass system, which has a driving force. Uh, so you could think of it as a spring mass system where at t equals 2 pi, you hit that, that uh, system with a force of 4 units. So you're essentially whacking that mass. And then what, what's going to happen? Well, then it's going to have this second term. This second periodic term or harmonic term gets added in. And so before uh, t equals 2 pi, you just have a nice uh, cosine function. You can think of that as indeed that is the uh, solution to the homogeneous equation. So that would be your complementary function. But then at t equals 2 pi, this other function, this 4 sine of t function, gets uh, added in to the uh, response function. So let's take a look at the graph of this function. So from, ignore the negative parts here. I'm not good enough with Desmos to eliminate that. But we start here from 0 to 2 pi. It's just cosine. This is just the cosine wave right here. And then it gets whacked at uh, 2 pi. And what does that do then? Well, it kind of forces it to keep going in the same direction, but now it's oscillating with a much larger period from then on.